<laughs> Bob Wilkins is alive, all right. Can you feature that awful creature? Can you feature that ugly creature? Creature features and feature features about creatures. Creature features. Now the strangest thing about this show or two is its host, Bob Wilkins, and he brings it to you. <laughs> Creature features and more creatures and more features. And the creature's gonna get you tonight. Yeah, I'm really thrilled, but who cares? I mean, it's Trillville Theater, but not really. What tonight is the return of Creature Features to Oakland. Yeah. Now, everyone has a Bob Wilkins story, some sad Bob Wilkins story. Oh, Mr. Thrill, I grew up watching Mr. Wilkins. Please, can I have a ticket, please? I grew up, I worship Mr. Wilkins. And I respect that. I myself, though, what happens after hearing him for the past 15 years, I got jealous, because I don't have a Bob Wilkins story, because I grew up in New Jersey. Land of the Sopranos. And back there in South Jersey, out of Philly, we had Doc Shock Presents. And I want to dedicate tonight's show to the memory of Doc Shock, because Doc Shock left this dimension over 20 years ago. However, the star of tonight's show is still very much with us and came all the way down from Reno just to see you. So what I did was, being Will the Thrill, I want my own Bob Logan story, so I said, hell, I'm just gonna bring Bob Wilkins down, have him put on a show, and then I'll have a Bob Wilkins story. <laughs> so, without further ado, first I'm gonna bring up the star of tonight's video and KTVU's ace entertainment reporter and, as has been revealed tonight to you youngsters, one of the uh, behind the scenes stars of Creature Features, Mr. Bob Shaw. First of all, through New Jersey. Why are you still living here? <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I know you didn't pay to see me up here tonight, so I'm going to bring Bob up as soon as possible. And this is the guy. He's very shy. This is a guy that a lot of us grew up watching and led us astray. Our parents worried about us because we weren't out doing bad things on Friday and Saturday nights. <laughs> and they were worried about us. But Bob Wilkins gave me my wife, my life. Uh, it's a long story. Maybe we'll get into it later. But I don't want to take up too much time. Here he is, Mr. Bob Wilkins. <laughs> Just always had a 
if, if I would ask him about a movie that I hadn't seen, he would give me all the facts and figures on it, and this and that. Sometimes a guest wouldn't show up for, uh, for the show. I'd put Bob on and we'd talk about this and that. Uh, he saved my life so many times at the station there. That's because I, I had a wasted life. I knew about the films. You didn't. <laughs> you had a real life. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you where I first met Bob Shaw. I was uh, working for uh, Channel 3 in Sacramento, and uh, they wanted me to, to start a, a horror show there, which I did. And on the very first night, uh, I, I remember the movie very well, Attack of the Mushroom People was my first, first uh, film. And I knew I was going to have trouble <laughs> if, if I told people to watch it, you know. Uh, I had taken it home, uh, I had a 16 millimeter projector at home, it would give me the three reels to take home. I watched it, and that movie I thought I mixed up the reels because it didn't. <laughs> Just, it just didn't make sense. So, <laughs> we showed it anyway, and uh, all of a sudden, the, uh, that was a, a Saturday night, of course, on um, either Monday or Tuesday came the first fan mail, a letter. It was from Bob Shaw, who, uh, where did you live then, Bob? Lafayette. Lafayette. Lafayette, okay, which really wasn't in the Sa Sacramento uh, range. I don't know how we picked it up, but in those days, there were only the network stations in various cities. You didn't have any independence. It, you didn't have television like it is today. And uh, Bob wrote to me about some of the errors that I, in talking about Attack of the Mushroom People, <laughs> I mean, how could you make a mistake? <laughs> you weren't aware of the quality of that film. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess we started to correspond a little bit. And also, there was another guy who all of a sudden was putting little blurbs into the, the Sunday Chronicle, the pink section. And... Uh, uh, he would put, Who was that guy? I don't know. John, uh, John Stanley. John, John Stanley. Yeah. And, and together with Stanley and Shaw, the, the thing started to go up, the ratings. And uh, anyway, uh, I, I think when I went to Channel 2, I invited you down. Is that correct? Well, actually, you had me on Channel 40. 40? Yeah, you weren't moved from three, okay. Channel Three in Sacramento. Channel Forty you had me on the air. Uh, like you said, somebody dropped out. I was there. Mm -hmm. But then, since I lived in Lafayette, you know, I could go down every week, and you would pay me. I think it was like twenty-five bucks a month <laughs> to, <laughs> to actually produce a show. And remember, you, you got all these uh, these amateur films, these eight millimeter things, mm -hmm. yeah that I would have to look at because you didn't want to. And I'm telling you, most of them were pornographic, you know? I, I didn't want to show them to you. There was one, like, three-minute film with a guy eating razor blades, and blood was just flowing out of his mouth. <laughs> Why did you send this? We can't put this on television. And even the worst things happened. But no, no, I, keep, I went down to Channel 2, and I was there every month, and that's how I got the job I have now, and, you know, God bless you. <laughs> anyway, Bob Shaw has always been the man behind the curtain there. When I was cutting a show, if I goofed up or gave uh, the wrong star for the wrong movie, he would just walk out and say, cut, and we'd have to start all over and he'd give me the original stuff. Well, what I liked about your show, though, was we didn't really cut all that much. That's right, we could yeah, yeah, you would say, next week we have Horror of Dracula, I go, House of Dracula, you go, okay, House. You know, okay. <laughs> it didn't matter. And what I loved about your show was anyone on the crew could laugh and shout things out. It was like a mom and pop TV station back then. And that's why I think it was. Anyway. 
it, 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 was, uh, it, it was fun to do, and uh, how long did we do it? Two uh, or three? 71 to, I think, well, John, you out there? 78? Uh, Bob left at early 79. Oh, 79, okay. How early, John? <laughs> <laughs> Too early? About 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> anyway, uh, without Bob Shaw, I don't think I would have lasted, just, you know, that long. He, you give me too much credit. He yes. was instrumental. He was even editing the movies right. that, that uh, I showed. And uh, uh, because he was around Channel 2 so much in the Bay Area, you got a job there, right? Right. I mean, people thought I worked for Channel 2. You know, <laughs> even though I didn't, I was working for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. for that 25 and, bucks. And you still work for two. I still work for two. How many years now? Uh, we're 18. talking... Uh, since starting with you over 30 years. Wow. Uh, they haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> they haven't figured it out. Anyway, let's do a recap uh, 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 about tonight's movie. Skip, give us your... Uh, okay, Tingler. Now, Will says the Tingler, this version they're going to show, actually has the color sequence, which we never show. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's a great color sequence, and when you see it, the only way they got the color sequence to look the way it does is the fact that uh, every the gal in the sequence um, has gray makeup on, gray wallpaper, everything. The only thing that's really in color is the blood coming out of the faucets. So, it, you know, it's kind of low tech, but it really works. And you see that. And maybe during the intermission, you know, we can talk about uh, what we actually cut out of Night of the Living Dead. Okay. So we can get that on the air. All right. Back in the 70s. And there were cuts, but they weren't drastic cuts, but we'll talk about that later. Now, during the intermission, uh, John Stanley is going to join us. <laughs> and what we would like from you folks... Uh, you don't have to write it down, or just maybe somebody can have a mic out there. We want questions, uh, and we'll give you the answers, hopefully, about yeah. what you felt about a movie, or how did we do this, or whatever you want to know about uh, uh, the life of uh, uh, TV people, okay? If, if any of us remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And let's see, uh, right John, John Stanley is going to join us during the intermission, and uh, uh, we'll talk more about uh, the good old days. So I want to thank you all for coming this evening. This I was expecting, uh, you know, maybe 10 or 12 people. <laughs> and, and I knew some of them would be my relatives, and they would be <laughs> They didn't want to get in free. It was going to be a bad night, you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then we're going to let the fans go out there and uh, try to be orderly. And then uh, halftime show, we're going to, like I said, Bob and Bob and John, the whole gang. And then after that, Monica Tiki Goddess will spin the wheel. we got some killer prizes to give away, including, including the Bob Hogan scrapbook, which we're going to be selling in the lobby, and John Stanley's Creature Features Guide. So lots of great Creature Features prizes at the halftime show. So right now we're going to roll it. Don, you guys are going to help me with the set. And uh, thanks for coming. That was Wilbur Whitlow at the electric organ. He's currently playing in Truckee, California at a Holiday Inn, which has finally been completed in that area. I'm going to change my name to Wilkins of Throkins. What do you think? Anyway, take it away, guys. So why are we here? 
Bob, is it true that you took the Greyhound bus to get here today? That's right. The Greyhound. Could you believe it? That was a joke. Bob used to say. No, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm serious. Used to be a joke. I'm serious. I know. This time it's serious. To Bob, but he always used to say, "I came from Sacramento to Oakland at Channel Two on the Greyhound bus." Now it's for real. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that he doesn't work at Channel Two any longer, he has to take the Greyhound bus. <laughs> let me let me uh, tell you for your interest how I met these two guys and how I, how I've been trying to get rid of both of them. Not really. Uh, when I started the, uh, the horror movie business, it was at Channel 3 in Sacramento. That goes way back, what, what year would that be? About, uh, 67. 67, 67. Uh, the first- They know more than we do. Really, 66? All right, in, in, in the 60s. Uh, All I know is my mother, the car. The first. On NBC that year. Okay. The first letter, the first fan letter I got was from a young Mr. Shaw at the end down there, Bob Shaw. And he was pointing out some errors that I made on that very first show. Uh, attack of the. Uh, Mushroom. Mushroom people. The mushroom people. Classic. That was a mistake I made playing that movie. Uh, anyway, uh, a few weeks after that, the, in the pink section of the Chronicle, the San Francisco Chronicle now, which has nothing to do with Sacramento really, all of a sudden my name starts to pop up with some funny... Uh, funny remarks about the movie that I was playing, and that was John Stanley. Yeah, uh, I was on the on the staff of the pink section, the pinky, the Sunday entertainment, and uh, in the TV pull-out section, I used to have to write little capsulized movie reviews, and uh, I had started to watch Bob's show, and I thought, well, I'll give him a little plug, you know, and I had a little fun, too. And uh, we and nobody knew the difference, so we got away with it. No, nobody in the Bay Area could see Bob. Though. I mean, nobody you're, you're cares about, about that. Who no. cares about that? Anyway, we're all uh, on the uh, on the stage this evening. It's sort of ironic that uh, uh, we would uh, all get together one day. Anyway, uh, Bob Shaw. Uh, used to sort of hang around the uh, the, uh, uh, the TV station there, ch Channel 2, right? I was lonely. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. uh, lot of lonely guys in San Francisco for some reason. <laughs> anyway, Bob finally got a job there, but he, he was, Bob Shaw was the man behind the scenes for me, get, uh, feeding me ma material on a certain movie or all sort of factual stuff that I had no knowledge of nor did I know where to look for it. And Bob Shaw was the man behind the scenes. Also, if someone didn't show up, a special guest or something, uh, at the last minute canceled, Bob Shaw would t take the seat and rattle off all sorts of stuff about the movie and- Kill time. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, it, it was just, he was just a, uh, a perfect that man. Killed the rating job. too, Bob. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not my fault. Yeah. Anyway, when I decided to uh, uh, give Creature Features up in the Bay Area, I selected John, and uh, John. And I... John wrote, wrote that show for five more years. That's incredible. Five yeah, more and years. Isn't it true, Bob, that uh, that you and Bob Shaw both felt there would hardly be anybody who could come along and really carry that show? I mean, in all honesty. No, that's true. Right. John, I don't know no, if I ever no. told you this, but some people at the station, since I was working behind the scenes with Bob, they said, why don't you try out for it? I said, no way in hell. This ain't gonna die within a year. And Bob leaves, and I don't want that role, but you made it work for the next five years. I mean, yeah, and I, I wish I could share with you uh, some magical formula about how do you, how do you host a show. All I can say is, uh, 
I just went out and did it the way I thought, the only way that I could really do it. Many movies. Uh, many movies, yeah. Uh, we go out, in fact, uh, you probably have seen a couple of them here recently, Return to Casablanca. Uh, the Mummy Rises, uh, Return of the Channel 2 Dragon. Uh, <laughs> the story values aren't too cool, but... Uh, <laughs> and we shot them with no budget. I mean, we'd go out and improvise everything. But beyond those movies, I have to say that, you know, Bob and I were just kind of looking at the movies. They're stupid, they're bad, we make fun of them. That's it. But you came from a literary end of it. You actually read... <laughs> read the books. <laughs> <laughs> Science fiction I books, you know where they, you know. I read the short story that, that The Day the Earth Stood Still was based right. on. <laughs> Bob and I are just laughing our asses off, and you, you had a history. So it was a totally different take on it. And I think that's why it worked. Yeah. Maybe, 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 maybe so. Uh, maybe so. I, I had my own sense of humor, too. Quite different from Bob's. Uh, but uh, I guess it just, uh, what can you say? How, how do you explain how something works? Either it does or it doesn't. Uh, Bob, I, wanted, I just want to tell the audience that uh, when we started working together, well, first of all, I had never met you when I was uh, at the Chronicle. We talked on the phone a couple of times. And then when you came to the uh, Bay Area, uh, you called me and said you were going to do the show at Channel 2. And I guess I was the first media person, <laughs> maybe the last, I'm not sure, uh, who I came over and interviewed you. We thought that's when we met for the very first time. And a big story. Uh, about Bob appeared in the Sunday Pinky just the week before you started the show. Right. And that's in the uh, scrapbook. Yeah, that's in uh, the Bob Wilkins scrapbook yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, so let's, okay. let's take the. Uh, you got some questions? Just a little back I mean, we need the yeah. questions now. That We're not here just to just pontificate. Ask us a question. Here's a hand down here in the front, Bob. What, what was Leon Heskett like? <laughs> that was the punchline to every Bob episode. He was a carpet man. Bob, Bob, tell him the background. You're picking up a lot of noise here. Uh, Leon Heskett was king, <laughs> king of the car carpets in, uh, in, uh, uh, yeah. in Oakland. Yeah, and we used to play around with his name, and he just loved it. Oh, yeah. Hey, Bob, you had just left. And I introduced a new contest called The Mysterious Weird Guest. Uh -huh. and, and I would give clues as to who the mysterious weird guest was. And it turned out to be Leon Heskett. <laughs> <laughs> because I was carrying through the tradition that you had established. That's great. I think Leon is in prison. <laughs> no, no, he, he did go to jail. Yeah, at one point, he was caught doing something. I think he burned down his own warehouse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Someone to play Burn Witch Burn. And the uh, next morning, that, that sucker was gone. All right, we're going to do this uh, with the mic. So I'm going to go around just like build the thrill down to you. Um, Bob, when I watched uh, the segments earlier tonight, I was really amazed at how much those segments are like uh, shows that you see today where you combine. A lot of uh, modern, you know, what you're doing live, and then suddenly you cut to like the organist and all these old fashioned things. Was there anything that inspired that, or was that sort of your own idea to come up with this combination of old stuff and new and that sort of humor that comes along with it? Well, you talk to me, or uh, talking to me? Either one. Whose ideas were those? Whose ideas were those? And I, I think that Bob Shaw had a hand in that. If he saw a weird film or at that time, uh, uh, you were working editing film, right? Right. And when Bob uh, saw something unique or, or di uh, different, uh, somebody playing at the organ, or t and and, and uh, I would announce we're cutting away to a theater in Oakland or something. And it would play for 10 seconds and come back to us. And it was just crazy stuff. And, uh, and I think Bob had a lot to do with some of this unique footage that he would run across uh, when he was editing film and things of that nature. Well, it's all found stuff. I mean, we'd go through the garbage cans because they're throwing stuff out. <laughs> and go, this is really weird. 
you know, so we'd save that here and there. And Bob, you know, used to run Edsel commercials, yeah. just like, you know, <laughs> like they were new. Or, or uh, <laughs> Ronald Reagan with the Yeah, I mean, so we all find this stuff that nobody else in the world would ever want, but we keep it and then find a way to run it, looking like, you know, this is really important. Okay, we've got another, another question here. Okay, Bob and John, did you ever walk away after doing a show thinking, oh, wow, we went too far, this time we're going to be out of a job? <laughs> well, uh, one time there were a couple of... Uh, uh, women who were scantily dressed, and they started wrestling. I can't remember all the circumstances. <laughs> and uh, one, one of the women had, had, had cut holes in her blouse, as if uh, it was raggedy and, you know, old. And as they were wrestling around, one of her breasts actually popped through that hole. <laughs> and uh, we finished the segment, and I hadn't seen it. I mean, it was, you had to see it from the perspective of the cameraman. And uh, the cameraman was kind of upset about it. So everything kind of stopped for a while while everybody decided, are we going to retake that or are we going to keep, is it a keeper? <laughs> and uh, uh, as I recall, uh, we redid it. We finally, everyone finally, the, the director, uh, George, uh, what was his name? Uh, George Love. The director decided, oh no, this is a family station and all that. And, yeah, yeah. and we got to recut that. However, before it was erased, <laughs> one, of the, one of the engineers uh, switched the rolls of tape so that we didn't erase the original. <laughs> and copies of the original were, were circulated through the station. But, uh, I still have that's, one. The, that's the only uh, time that I can remember anything that I thought, well, you know. Okay, next question over here, from Mary. Uh, this is for Bob Wilkins. Whatever happened to the robot 2T2? Woo! Very good question. Uh, 2T2 is housed well, in a garage in Sacramento, California. That's where 2T2, that's where I brought him out uh, uh, to be on in the Captain Cosmic show. And we took him down to a, a, a painter, and he sprayed him, and you know, uh, made him look new. And uh, now, do you commission him to be built, or was he already built? No, it, it was as is. Oh. And, <laughs> Uh, it was interesting uh, how Captain Cosmic came about, if you, if you want to hear. Uh, yes. <laughs> the, Tom Green was the program director at Channel 2. He called me in one day, and uh, Star Wars had been out for a couple of weeks, and uh, everybody, you know, was lined up to see that movie over and over again. He said, I want to put on something like Star Wars, with, uh, you know, action and so forth. But without the budget. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, we have a number of Japanese products, and we want to play it in when the kids, uh, the younger kids get home from school. Yeah. Okay? So he said, come up with some ideas. Okay, here's a program director with no ideas, <laughs> which is the way I wanted it because then I wouldn't have any kind of direction I, I, I could go out and, and, and try to do something so we uh, first thing I did was if I was going to host it I couldn't host it as Bob Wilkins so I went into Berkeley and made a, 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 the costume uh, and to disguise my face, we had a football helmet that came down over it, and they sprayed that silver. It was, it was silver and red were the colors. And the same thing with uh, the robot, 2T2. Anyway, within uh, a 10-day period, this type of programming, where it was uh, in that time slot, became number one. No one was close to it. The only problem was into the second year of it, there were no, no more products, so we had to st start rerunning stuff. 
And then finally, as the ratings started to drop, of all things, they brought in the old black and white Flash Gordon things. Remember the server? Uh, those were fine if you were a little bit older, but the kids didn't buy that at all. And, and uh, so T2, 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 For the first year, Bob called the it T2, 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 out of the closet. And I have to say oh, one thing about the old Flash Gordon episodes. Uh, I was working in the film department, and I had to cut like five minutes out of every one of these episodes, mm -hmm. you know, to make it fit, to have the robot you want, and stuff like that. But what was great was we had this old film machine where you could run it forwards or backwards and listen to the sound either way. And I forget what episode it was or what serial it was, but. The way they had the Martian sounding really weird was they recorded stuff backwards and laid it in. They're going, but when you run it backwards, you could hear the actors saying, hey, where do you want to go to lunch today? I don't know. You know this is a weird thing. They, really, they never thought anybody could hear that. You know, on the big screen, that's true. It was hysterical. Now, Bob, I'd like to ask you, I know we can make a lot of jokes about playing a costume character, uh, and that's kind of an unusual place for an actor to go to, because you have to sort of submerge yourself into a characterization. <laughs> but did you have any, uh, did you lay, lay awake, lose any sleep for a few nights, wondering if that was something you really wanted to do? No, I, ju I just, I took, I took the check each weekend, and uh, I just took it on and on. You see, one of the things that probably you did not do it to was I was I studied the ratings so much and and would go into Tom Bree and say we've got to play this movie here and so forth and of course he studied the ratings too but he he would. Uh, most of the time saying, well, let's try that, you know. Uh, and so, and every time the rating went up, I was in there asking for a raise. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, we got uh, time for two more questions, and here's one right here. Pardon? Uh, Mr. Stanley, you made a film, I believe, called Theater of Blood. Uh, will uh, we a nightmare no, in nightmare blood. blood. Nightmare and, and Bob Shaw was a corpse yeah. in that. I play a dead guy in that. <laughs> oh, and well, uh, Bob Wilkins was kind enough to let us use the Creature Feature set one evening uh, in 1973, I guess, when we made that. Because in our script, we had a counter character to you. There was actually the host of a, uh, I think it was called Fright Flicks. Uh, he, he had a Saturday night uh, TV show, and we actually photographed uh, our movie on your set, the Creature Feature set. And an actor named Morgan Upton, uh, who's dead now, played, uh, played you, and I have a Not wonderful... Your fault. And I have a wonderful picture on my wall at home of the two of you with great big cigars in your mouth shaking hands. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was a there was a company here in Oakland who actually uh, Video City uh, used to be a chain of stores. Uh, Bob Brown, I think, used to run it. I think he's gone now. Uh, yeah, he put that on video back in the '80s, and a nice clamshell box had a picture of. Uh, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, and there was a vampire carrying a beautiful woman, and so on. Why it's is quite it, an elaborate uh, deal. Why is it that every, everyone you know is dead? <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, you, you and Bob are still alive. Hey, John, is there a 35 millimeter print of that flick we can show here at Thrillville Theater? Uh, I, I, you know what? The distributor ran those films for like three or four years, all of the 35 millimeter prints. They went back and forth across the country. And finally, uh, they just wore out. They got scratched, broken, and he, so finally, he finally cons so he finally sent them to the place they probably belong, the scrappy. Uh, I have some video copies, but I don't have a 35 millimeter print. No, I'm sorry. Okay, one last question. It's on eBay. <laughs> What's that? Dude, I let you in at the last minute. Shut up. <laughs> Your question was, can I have a ticket? I said yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, John, this is Matthew. Years ago, I remember 
watching the Hammer Horror movie uh, Twins of Evil, and they ran that movie uncut. Now, was that by yeah. accident, or did you guys, were you trying to push the boundary? Uh, I think uh, Bob Shaw could probably talk about this in relation to a man named Jim Skinner. Yes, Jim Skinner was a guy who uh, ran the film department in the 70s. And we, he would let anything go. We had full frontal nudity on, on the 8 o'clock movie. Or uh, Snake Island. Snake remember? Island, uh, Demons of the Mind with uh, Patrick McGee. Uh, and he let it run. And basically the front office didn't know what the hell he was doing. You know, so Demons of the Mind would run and uh, they'd see the ratings and they'd go, what the hell? This is, this is a huge hit, because you know, normally the ratings start off you know, big and then go down. This, you know, people would call their friends and say, we got bare breasts and everything else going on. And they go, why did we run this in, you know, in a non-reading period? And then finally, the front office would look at the film and go, holy crap. <laughs> We ran this on the air, and we ran some stuff on your <laughs> show, too. <laughs> like, why is this running on Wilkins? It should be on the 8 o'clock movie, or you know, during the reading period and all that. No, we got away with a lot. I mean, things are so much more conservative now than they used to be back then. And I really credit and, Jim Skinner for oh, pushing through yeah. a lot of that. I mean, he, he let it run, and he would just take the heat. The executives know. were too busy with other things to worry about how films were being cut. And maybe this is a good time to talk about Night of Living Dead. Yeah. Come on, if you're friends, so I, I was working the film department. I was not in charge of that film at the time. Well, as you know, there are several scenes in this you know, which could probably never run in the 70s on TV. Uh, the one scene with the ghouls eating the intestines. Yeah. We'll see it tonight. <laughs> yeah. We'll see it tonight. Yes. You also said there was a little girl when she kills oh, her yeah, father. Yeah, and the little girl when she takes a trowel to her father like eight times. Well, uh, we're we're going to play that on the loop. Well, we only <laughs> we only showed it like three or four times. I mean, it's the whole thing was politics back then. It's like we'll give you three trowels, not four. Blah, blah, blah. But Bob, you know, was instrumental in saying how far we should go with that film. Yeah, and he said, <laughs> he said, yeah, this is good, that ain't good, blah, blah, blah. You're going to see the whole thing tonight, like you saw the color sequence and the tingler, you know, the whole thing. Uh, Will does a great job of getting uncut prints. Yeah. But, <laughs> okay, strapping over here, strapping over here. He's, he's a big baby, he's going to start crying. So we let him ask us one last question. It's actually, it's a good question to end the night on. Streffen, take it away. With the flood of medium we have, I mean, we get access to everything. Why doesn't what you guys did work anymore? Why doesn't it, why isn't it, you know, used anymore? Uh, all the good movies are owned by cable stations. The sci-fi channel has all the you know, universal... We're talking classes. about Bob Wilkins. Well, what, I, what I'm saying is, we could not, I mean, that's the reason I think you quit, right? You weren't getting good films anymore. They're all being sold. Uh, <laughs> the whole business of television was undergoing a major transition then, and I lived through those last few years where suddenly the video store, the video machine, cable, all the number of stations you could uh, turn to and get uh, movies on. Suddenly, watching Bob Wilkins on Saturday night uh, with your with your date because there was really uh, no other place to find a movie it didn't work anymore because now. You could take your date out to, to and find whatever movie you wanted and look at it whenever you wanted to. And, uh, and, and of course, as Bob said, the movie packages really began to deteriorate. The thing is, if you wanted to get Ben Hur on your station, you had to get some crappy little horror film. And usually they just burn those. They actually created a film for a film, you know, venue for Bob. <laughs> they didn't just run the stuff in the middle of the night. They gave Bob a reason to run it. And he had fun with it. Well, yeah, but the whole thing is, you know, Bob is like one of the most, you know, this guy, you look at him, he's a funny guy. I'll tell you but, but he had such integrity that when all the films that were coming through the pike at Channel 2 were just kind of slasher films, he thought, I couldn't do this anymore. And they were all bloody. I mean, you, you liked a good, bad film. 
as much as anybody else, but you didn't like a bad, bad film. And with blood and gore. Yeah, Friday the 13th was the kind yeah, of movie we were exactly. saying to get at toward mm -hmm. the end of the Creature Feature Girl. Yeah, it was all slasher stuff, and Bob just kind of said, oh, that's it for me. And I admire him for that. <laughs> I'd like to tell you a really quick, a really quick story. Uh, Bob was leaving the station. We were throwing a champagne party for him uh, in 1980. And I went up to Bob, and I said, Bob, Bob, I've never really been able to believe that you gave up Creature Features, even though it's been a year now. Why did you do it? And he turned to me and he said, John, I did not want to be the guy who does the last show like you will probably have to do one of these days. <laughs> Which I did in uh, September of 1984. Yeah. And that's when Creature Features died. But, but you kept it together. Five years, that's great. Yeah, okay, well, thanks, Bob. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, Creature Features is just revived, wasn't it? It's here right now, Creature Features. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. And one, and one last thing, someone brought up Joe Bob Briggs. Joe Bob was going to do a thrill bill. He flanked on me. Oh. Yes, he didn't flank on me. That's right, yeah. The highlight of tonight's show has nothing to do with our movies. We're going to play a Preparation H commercial in color, and I think it'll have you right on the edge of your seat. Okay, uh, Doug, going to help clear out the set while we do this. We got some great prizes to give out. And also, I want to I want to have a couple people come up here, take a bow. One, of course, is Uncle Bill, the trailer king, Bill Long, in here. <laughs> Uncle Bill was a, a, an editor on Creature Features during uh, John Stanley's reign, is that right? That's right. What else That's right. Right. And, and uh, people want to know, where do you get these amazing trailers? Yeah. From private collectors all over the country. Mostly, uh, actually, out of one paper called the Big Reel, which most film collectors get. Um, they sell 16, 35 mm films. And I, I've, I've been in the business for so long, the theater business and television, that uh, people call me and say, "Hey, I've got this collection of trailers. Uh, this stuff sitting around here. I'd love to throw it out. Do you want it?" So I said, "Yeah, sure. I'll pay the shipping." Here it is. <laughs> and actually, Bill grew up in the theater business back east, right? Back in Philadelphia, yes. Billy, yeah. nice shot. All right, give it up for Uncle Bill, our trailer king. I'm going to bring John up here, our light and sound guy from Barely Legal. Come on up, John. All four shows this month, Feature Features, John's been here. Way to go, John. Yeah. And this is Scott Moon, publisher of Planet X Magazine. And actually, whenever he does the third issue, whenever that is, we're going to have a release.
he's partying here in three months. Yeah, I've heard that before, buddy. I, I actually did the cover story. I used to be the cover story. I interviewed, I interviewed Bettina Marcus, who was the green lady on Lost in Space. Dr. Smooth. And Bob Ekman and Scott and me are going to throw a psychotronic film show December 28th. So hope to see you there for that. So, and he's got, a, he's got a website he wants to plug here. Uh, just got it up. BobWilkins.tv. BobWilkins.tv. Somebody else bought BobWilkins.com. There's an international corporation out of Germany that bought BobWilkins.com. So. Bob, Bob Wilkins.tv is much better, so. That's all you have to type in and you'll see everything about Bob Wilkins. We'd like to also thank all of you who brought your scary, sick, twisted paraphernalia yeah. to put on the set. You really made it. I made the set work. Don't go away because at the end of the show, I'm going to have some rare black and white slides of a vacation I took in 1954. They've never been shown on television before, and I think you're going to like them. I'd like to thank Doug Jones and Buddy Charles made that set we just saw. Just for the show. Okay, real quick, Doug, real quick, tell me how you did it. When we use advanced computer skills, <laughs> when we, uh, we shopped around for things that they were going to throw away at the home club. Lots of masking tape. Lots of masking tape. Uh, the whole thing actually folds up like a suitcase and you can walk out with it. It's a work of genius, my friend designer. The, uh, the sign, I'm thinking of digitizing the sign and mass producing them. Everybody seems to want one of those signs. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Doug. All right, now, I don't know, if, has anyone not been to Thrillgo? Does everyone know Thrillgo etiquette? We're going to do trivia. Monica here will choose you. So no Horshacks, no calling out where it ruins the question. I only got so many, and I'm too tired to think of any new ones. Exactly, thanks for that example. Please do not call out. Okay. I got so many prizes, because all of you fans gave me shit to give away. <laughs> so we have to do this in bulk. Like... Section A, Section B. Anyway, um, how about this? We got two prizes from August over at Kimono My House. And ladies, I'm going to reveal every man's secret fantasy. Me? Yeah. Your second secret fantasy is that one day Ultraman will fight Godzilla. Yeah. You can make it happen. <laughs> Ultraman, Godzilla. <laughs> so, raise your hand. <coughs> Fading fast. Charlie, give him my water. Where's my water? Can you get some water? Thank you, thank you very much. Charlie, give us water in our car. Oh, good, it's gin. Okay. <laughs> In King Kong versus Godzilla, raise your hand. Who won? Uh, gentleman in the green shirt. She never chooses me. Yes, you, you. Um, in Japan, Godzilla won. Bullshit! No, it's bullshit. All oh, right, geeks, Jesus. Pick one. <laughs> Just say a name. <laughs> one one no calling out. Yes, finish, finish your sentence, sir. Pick one. Damn. Right. Good. Come on down. You know, it's getting late. I want to take it either way. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. From Bob Eckman, a lobby card from the Tingler. Damn. All you got to do is tell me this. Vincent Price did the voice of the Invisible Man. In what film? Raise your hand. Uh, let's see. Yes, sir. Wrong. Good try. How about here? Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein. Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein is correct. All right. Yes, I can see you. All right. 
She sees everything. And I can hear you, too. Attack of the 50 foot Kiki Goddess. Okay, listen. <laughs> Ultra film facts. Great issue. Uh, Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory. Uh, uh, Cars the Mummy, Bob Burns. Paul Blaisdell's friend. And my interview with my stepmom, Ann Helm, who you may know from The Magic Sword and Nightmare on Wax. So my uncle, my stepmom, and and because we're consolidating for time, a gift certificate to the Wayback Machine in Emeryville. So cool vintage guy joke. That goes to the person uh, who can tell me this. In what film did Bela Lugosi play Frankenstein's monster? Raise your hand. Over here? Yes. That's correct. Frankenstein makes the Wolfman. Oh, and speaking of Ann Helm, she's going to be here at the Parkway November 11th along with Deborah Wally, who was Gidget, and Joan Blackman from Blue Hawaii, because we're having a Swingin' Chicks of the 60s book encounter release party. Saturday, November 11th. So come meet my stepmom. All right. God, look at all this crap. Okay, hold on. Hey, Will, is Julie Parrish going to be there too? All right, check this out. We're going to do some of these as a wheel spin. We're going to do this as a trivia prize. We have here an original certificate. You can have Bob Wilkins sign it real quick. The Creature Features membership. Oh, that's cool. That's nice right there. Goes to the person who can tell me this. In what film did Teenage Werewolf meet Teenage Frankenstein? Raise your hand. Right there. Yes, back here. How to Make a Monster. That's correct. How to Make a Monster. Oh, yeah. Come get it. Go get it signed. So. <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> this guy played a zombie in the dead pit. Erwin, where are you, Erwin? Erwin here was a zombie in the dead pit. <laughs> it goes to the person who tell me this. Vincent Price started this film based on a Richard Matheson novel that is considered the inspiration for Night of the Living Dead. Raise your hand. Right here. No, not you. Back there. Back there with the hat. She never chooses down here, though. I'm surprised she does. Yes! I'm surprised she chooses you because she never We didn't hear you. Say it again. She doesn't go down. That's correct. Last man on now. You need to speak up, I'm old. Okay. I was young when the night started. Okay. Speaking of inspirations for Night of the Living Dead, this is another one. Carnival of Souls. Yeah. And yeah, when you watch it, you see it. Okay. Um, in From Hell It Came. Yes. Where the hell it can go. Identify it. Raise your hand. How about, yes, sir. Black. Oh, wait, I already called on you, not you. Uh, have I called on you? Okay, yes. Tabanga. Tabanga, well, what is he? That's okay. <laughs> you gotta say it, dude. It's you know, it's part of the game. Okay. Hey, Scott, do you have that one on tape? No, I don't. Good. Okay. All right. A couple more trivia questions, real quick. Uh, what else we got here? We're gonna do the wheel spin in a second. Huh. Frankenstein comic book. All right. Uh, that's kind of, uh, so Frankenstein Unbound, Book of the Dead, Marvel Comics, number one, The Origin of Man-Thing. And I'm gonna throw in some more Ultraman figures from Come On To My House. So you're gonna be 12 years old again. You can tell me this. The creature from the Black Lagoon visited Sausalito in what film? Raise your hand. Right here. The Creature Walks Among Us is correct. Okay, one more trivia question. Another Tingler card in a famous scene. 
Raise your hand. What film takes place partially on the planet Meta Luna? Right here. This Islander. Raise your hand. This Islander. Huh? Yeah. No. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Come on down. All right, now Monica's going to spin the wheel. So we're going to give the odds in. Look at that. Wow. All right, here is original press materials for Night of the Living Dead. Donated by Streffen, the big baby back there. And uh, Streffen, what the hell is this again? That's the uh, original press release to a newspaper for a 77 bottle of business. Like they showed the paper, the paper they showed the picture, and also the description of the movie they're going to play. Okay. Okay. That's what it is. Thank you, Streffin. All right. Let's go to Lucky Number. There. Everyone has their little creature features ticket. Look on the back. There's a number. Lucky Number. Right between the monster's legs, probably. Okay. Right between your legs. One, nine, five. I hope that's not you, Streffin. Okay. We have a win. Okay, another certificate, Feature Features certificate. It is for me to understand, <laughs> not for you. One, four, seven. Oh. Hey, Bob's still out there, go get a sign. Okay, one more. That's my fiance, pal. <laughs> like we said. Scrapbook. This is the Parkway Theater Special Edition. Embossed just for this occasion. There's only two of them. I have the other one, and lucky number two, two, nine. Two, two, nine. Let's see the All right, let's give it up for the Tiki Goddess. In about five minutes, don't be Bob if you want to. We're going to roll the film that includes some killer trailers from Uncle Bill the Trailer King. And then a new print of Night of the Living Dead. What's that? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Where is it? 
Where is it? Hey, Doug, did you take that clock off? Yeah, it's right there. No. On the table. Ask a question? The other Bob Wilkins clock. You want to do trivia or you want to uh, spin the wheel? Well, let's try that again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's try, whoa. Let's try it again. Shh. Numbers. Shh. Shh. Numbers. Everyone who wants trivia, clap. I already know who will die with. Okay, spin the wheel. It's just, it's too late for trivia, baby. All right. Two or two. All right, T2-2. Two, two. Right. two. No. Six. Two. Nine. Two, six, nine. Two, two. It's the Bob Wilkins clock. Too many twos. Here we go, my dear. Good. All right, you're all set. Okay. All right, let's give it up for the Tiki Goddess here. Boo. Boo. Well, give it up for yourselves for showing up. Thanks for coming tonight. And a big round of applause for Will Thrill, who had 102 fever starting this week. But in his sick bed, he was making calls, getting this show together for you. So I hope you appreciate it. Well, that's it. I told you it was rotten. If, they, if there's a worse film than that around, I want to see it, okay? Next week, The Walking Dead with Boris Karloff, Edmund Gwynn, and we'll have Equinox for you, and we'll have Flash Gordon chapter number two, okay? So take it easy. My name's Frank Nitty. Hope you had a nice Valentine's Day. Good night.